thank you everyone um, for joining. Welcome. Today's class is sponsored by an anonymous sponsor. Sponsors are always welcome and they help Emmet to continue and help others. Um, the class is dedicated of um, all the people that uh, need in um, the sponsors, family and close uh, friends. And Bezad Hashem, may the whole Klal Yisrael have Rufuah Shlema. Whoever needs children should have children and uh, everyone should be inspired by the, the, the upcoming holiday. Bezat Hashem, we should really become free, leave our personal slavery, and Bezat Hashem, may we all merit to see Mashiach this coming uh, year, hopefully even before Passover. So today, the class is going to be um, about Pesach preparation, as well as brief description of the mitzvot of the seder, the, the Pesach seder. First, we are going to go through how to clean chametz in the entire house. Then we're going to go to how to kosher your utensils and appliances. And then we will um, speak about the steps on the day um, of Bidikat Hametz, the day of burning the Hametz, and Shabbat right before Pesach, what to do on the day. Um, everything I'm going to be speaking about is in the packet that is on the Emmet website, as well as it was uh, posted uh, on WhatsApp and, and, and uh, all over the internet. If you can print it out, uh, alternatively, you can view it now, but make sure you do print it before Pes Pesach so that it can help you on Yom Tov as well. Because on the Seder, when we cannot use our phones, you will have the, the instructions for the Seder. And um, lastly, we will go through the mitzvot of the Seder and the uh, proper way of um, eating matzah, drinking wine, maror, and uh, every, every other part of the Seder, the amounts, um, the volume that it needs to be to be eaten or drunk. Okay, Bezat Hashem, let us start. First of all, the, um, the law about chametz teaches us that not only we're not allowed to eat chametz, we're also not allowed to possess it. We're not allowed to possess it and uh, we're not allowed to benefit from it. Therefore, in addition to uh, making sure that we don't eat it, we have to check the entire house as well as all our uh, properties, including movable properties like the car and offices, uh, uh, as well as all children's and adult pockets, coats, handbags, knapsacks, to make sure that we don't have any chametz. And if we have a large amount of chametz that we cannot get rid of, we can sell it to a non-Jew and then buy it back after Passover. And uh, these two prohibitions have different amounts. We're not allowed to eat any amount of chametz, even a tiny crumb, even a drop of a chametz mixture is forbidden. However, the amount of, for, for possessing chametz is a kezait, an olive's volume. That means that when we are cleaning the kitchen and all the areas where we eat, we have to do a, 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 a thorough cleaning. And we have to make sure that there is not a speck of chametz because we're not allowed to eat even a tiny bit of chametz. However, when we're cleaning the rest of the house, when we're cleaning bedrooms and um, hallways and bathrooms, there we don't have to be as careful. As long as we don't have pieces that are edible 
and they are the size of an olive or larger, we are okay. We just remove any chametz that is edible, uh, let's say a cheerio size or larger, and the rest we can ignore. Therefore, a person should spend majority of his time cleaning his kitchen and his uh, utensils and appliances, and only a small portion of the time searching throughout the house, looking for packages and looking for bottles that have actual chametz or mixtures of chametz. But you don't really have to worry about crumbs that are on the floor, crumbs that are in um, cracks in your uh, hardwood floor, uh, stains of chametz on the walls and, uh, and ceiling, and uh, chametz that is under heavy appliances that you're not planning to move, all those you don't have to worry about. To make your job easier on Pesach, concentrate only on chametz that is, um, that it is a possibility that you might eat it. Now, another idea to make your life easier is that in addition to selling the actual chametz to a non-Jew, um, we can also sell any chametz that is stuck to our utensils and appliances, and we can uh, sell all the closets that may have chametz. That will help us not to check those closets and not to clean those closets, those pots and pans, even whole rooms. So only check and clean on Pesach things that you actually need for Pesach areas of your house that you can just close, including rooms, including uh, closets, appliances, like toasters, microwaves, grills that you are not going to need on Passover. Just close it, uh, mark it uh, that it's sold, block it off, limit the access, and you don't have to worry about it. Include it in your sale, and since it's not going to belong to you, you don't have to clean it. Therefore, it's recommended to choose a few closets that you think you may need uh, for your Pesach dishes and your Pesach food. And clean, empty and clean only them. The rest of the closet you don't have to worry about. Just close them, tape them and mark them and sell them. Okay. Um, when you are separating your chametz, you can even separate the chametz that is in the refrigerator or in the freezer, but it has to be in a separate bag or on a separate shelf covered. The chametz and non-chametz food should not be mixed. Even if you are selling all your chametz to a non-Jew, we are concerned that you might forget. And when you see chametz on your shelf uh, exposed, you might eat it. So in order to avoid it, put it in a separate bag, tie it, or put it on a separate shelf uh, and cover it, mark it that it's sold, but it can stay in your refrigerator or in your freeze, freezer. Um, if you have a regular vacuum cleaner that has a bag that collects uh, dust and dirt, Make sure you throw it out before Passover because uh, as you vacuum, you might have cookies and, and cereal collecting in that bag and you don't want to have any chametz in your possession. Uh, similarly, if the time for your uh, garbage removal is um, after the Passover starts, make sure you don't have chametz sitting inside your garbage can on your property on Passover. If you know that the garbage collection is um, on Passover, either dispose of all chametz at the previous garbage collection or bring it to a public um, uh, facility, public garbage can, so that 
Hametz is not on your property. And if you have no uh, ability to dispose of Hametz off of your property, then you have to make it inedible by uh, spraying it with bleach before putting it into the garbage can. Um, okay. Uh, the reason why it's not enough to just isolate hametz, put it away, and not sell it is because any hametz, even though you're not eating it, but it belonged to you, after Pesach becomes forbidden. So even though you're not eating hametz, and that's good, but if you possess hametz, that hametz becomes inedible. And uh, after Pesach, you will have to dispose of it. And not only that, on Pesach, such a person transgresses the, the negative commandment of possessing Hametz. So not only you have to um, find the Hametz, put it away in a safe place, you also have to sell that Hametz as well as any other Hametz that you may uh, have uh, um, f uh, forgotten or didn't see. Okay, now... If you have the, pa the packet from Emmet with you, you can follow along. I'm now going to page uh, three of the packet. And let's go through the appliances in the kitchen. First of all, the oven. There are two types of oven, self-cleaning oven and uh, regular oven. If you have self-cleaning oven, Cleaning it is very easy. All you have to do is set it on a, a full self-cleaning cycle. And after the cycle is finished, your oven is kosher for Passover. If your oven is um, not self, uh, doesn't have self-cleaning option, then you actually have to um, clean the oven from all spills. You have to make sure it doesn't have any um, caked on uh, hummets or food, which means you have to wash it very well with a, a sponge with special oven cleaner. And only after you clean all the spills and you clean the, um, uh, the actual uh, hametz stains and uh, and uh, pieces of hametz from the oven, then you set the oven to the highest temperature that it can go to, usually 450 or 500 degrees. Or if you have broil, you put it on broil and you keep it like that for one hour, after which you can use the oven. If a person can bake all his food before Passover, that is recommended halachically because before Passover, the laws of chametz are more lenient. If any <clears throat> drop of chametz fell into your food before Passover, it becomes nullified in 60. However, if you cook on Passover and a drop of chametz falls into your food, it does not become nullified and the entire food becomes forbidden, even if it's only a tiny bit of chametz. Therefore, many people have a custom to cook and bake all their uh, Pesach food before <coughs> Pesach. This way, uh, there's a greater guarantee that the food is kosher. Um, and such food can be stored in the refrigerator or frozen and then just warmed up on, the, on Yom Tov. Next is um, the microwave. The microwave, also, you have to remove all crumbs, all stains, and wash it well with a sponge soaked in detergent or soapy water. And after you washed it, uh, and the microwave is absolutely clean, you put a bowl of uh, water, and you turn the microwave on for a few minutes, or as long as uh, it takes for water to, to boil. 
and uh, once the water is boiling and the entire interior of the microwave is filled with steam, then you can turn it off, remove the water and wipe the microwave and it's ready for Pesach. And uh, um, the general rule is that um, utensils and appliances that we clean with boiling water, you have to first wait 24 hours from its last use. And only then you follow the steps. You can do the cleaning before, but then uh, uh, cushering it with boiling water or with steam has to be 24 hours after last use. For the oven that is self-clean, uh, it's not necessary because there we we use fire and we burn everything. But for microwave or for utensils that we're going to boil, you do need to wait 24 hours since they were used last time. Okay. Um, also for the microwave, remember that the glass plate needs to be washed very well um, on both sides. Now we go to page four of the pamphlet, the stove top to, um, we will speak about each item as we go down the list. Don't worry, uh, the list has everything. So we're not gonna, going to forget Bezat Hashem. The stove top, the, of course you have to wash with soap the, the surface. The stovetop has two, two parts, the, the, the metal uh, flat surface, plus the uh, black metal um, grates, cast iron grates that, um, that hold the pot. So of course you have to wash with soap and, and, and make sure there are no crumbs on the surface of the stovetop. But the grates require additional, um, uh, cleaning and you have three options either you can put them into the self-cleaning oven and uh, you don't have to uh, wash them you just put them in a self-cleaning oven and they are kosher right after use of course they might be covered with soot with black uh, dust you have to clean them not to uh, make everything dirty but they will be kosher after the self-cleaning cycle if you don't have self-cleaning oven, then you have two other options. Either you place a, a, a piece of aluminum foil as uh, just enough to cover the area where the, where the pot goes. Uh, let's say a, a piece of aluminum foil the size of a piece of uh, paper. You put it on one grate at a, tire, at, at a time, just flat on top, you turn the stove burner on the highest flame for two minutes. And after that, it's ready. You turn off the heat and you move the aluminum foil to the next grate. And like this, you do every grate. And the third option, especially useful for large grates, where the fire will not be able to spread and uh, heat up the entire grate is to just uh, wash them and afterwards put them into the sink and pour boiling water over every part of the grate. Um, it can be done part, piece by piece to make sure every part of the grate is covered by uh, boiling water. If you put grates into the self-cleaning oven, you don't have to wash them because the self-cleaning oven, the heat is so strong that it will burn whatever food is uh, stuck to the grate. Okay. Um, now the, the actual burner, sometimes the, the plate that covers the burner gets dirty as well. So you would also take off that plate and, uh, and wash it with soap. Um, if you have electric stovetop, and they come in two different um, 
uh, kinds. Either you have the exposed element, the heating element that glows is exposed and you put the pot directly on it. That's very easy. You just turn it on until it becomes red hot. And that's it, you turn it off and you're done. If you have a stove top that's covered by glass, you have to uh, wash the entire surface with soap. And then um, also you turn it on each grate, uh, each burner one at a time um, until it's red hot. And that is again uh, enough. Next is the um, blech or the metal sheet that we use for Shabbat. Preferably, you should get a new uh, blech just special for Pesach, but if you cannot, you have to wash it very well from all the stains and then cover it with aluminum foil on top. And that's it. Now, if you have a plata, electric plata or electric hot plate, you have to wash it well with soap and then cover it with aluminum foil um, for the entire duration of Pesach. Next, we go to the dishwasher. Dishwasher, we have to make sure that there are uh, no spill or no actual food in the dishwasher. And once the dishwasher is clean, you have to put soap in it and run an empty cycle with hot water, with detergent. And after uh, an empty cycle, the, the dishwasher may be used for Passover. As you see, uh, all these uh, laws are very easy, quick, painless, Baruch Hashem. Now, next is sink. Uh, for sink, you don't need to wait 24 hours. It's preferable, but you don't have to. And the reason is because we generally don't use the sink for um, to put hot food directly onto the sink. We usually uh, put pots in there. And, um, and if we put vegetables there, the, the, um, they're not hot. Okay, uh, so what do you do? You wash it with soap, make sure it's clean. And then you pour boiling water on every part of the sink. Um, it can be done one part at a time if you don't have enough boiling water. The only condition is that every time you pour, the sink has to be dry. So if you only had enough boiling water to cover one half of the sink, dry the sink, prepare more boiling water, and then pour more um, um, boiling water on the second half of the sink. And if possible, it's, it's uh, um, preferable to put a sink rack on the bottom. Um, the dish rack, it's good to use a new dish rack, otherwise uh, wash it very well. Alternatively, uh, you can cover your uh, dish rack for drying your dishes with a clean towel. And um, a note about tablecloths, towels, linen, all these things that go into the washing machine, once they're washed with detergent, they become kosher for Pesach. So you can take your uh, tablecloth, towels, and everything else that can go into the washing machine, including clothing, children's clothing that once had chametz in them, and their dirty clothing that they spilled chametz on, all that you can wash in the washing machine and all clothing will become kosher for, for Pesach. Now let's continue with counters. There are three options for counters. Now, some people uh, clean the counters and cover the counters with some kind of um, plastic or wood or or cloth. That is praiseworthy, but it's not required. The second option is to clean all counters with soap 
and and the, and sponge, and afterwards pour boiling water on them. And um, if a person can do that, that's good. That is the the. Uh, basic halacha to just clean it with soap and then pour boiling water. However, if your counter cannot handle boiling water or you don't want to pour boiling water because you're worried not to get burned or not to make a mess or you don't have time for it, then just wash your counters with soap and sponge very well and make sure you don't put food directly on it throughout Pesach, which means, which is normally done in the, the household anyway, you always use a cutting board or plates to put food on. Don't put food directly on the counter, especially if the food is hot. Next is uh, for your table. Um, all you need to do is wash the surface of the table and always use uh, plastic or uh, cloth to cover the table. We don't need to cover the table with aluminum foil or anything like that. It's enough that the table is clean and that there is one layer of table cover, either plastic or cloth on it. Next is hot water urn. Um, a normal hot water urn, all you have to do is rinse it on the inside and wash it, or just wipe it down with a, with a sponge, a soapy sponge on the outside and uh, wash the spout. Um, however, if you used your hot water urn to warm up your challah during the year, preferably you should not use that uh, earn on Pesach, but if you have to um, put the, the cover uh, into the boiling water after washing it very well. Okay, now we go to page five of the Pesach uh, packet. Now we go to um, utensils. I just want to mention um, any kitchen um, appliance or utensil that is um, complicated, that is composed of uh, multiple parts that are connected. And between the parts, there's a small space that is very difficult to clean. Such utensils should not be used on Pesach because little crumbs or stains of hamets might be stuck there. And uh, since it's very hard to clean inside, on Pesach, the food might get there and, and uh, stick to hamets and then remove that hamets and bring to the rest of your food. Chas v'shalom. So uh, this includes food processors, mixers that, that have connecting parts, gaskets, uh, complicated um, uh, covers, uh, and, and other parts that are very hard to clean. If they're metal, you can, uh, after washing it with soap, you can put it over fire to burn any hummus that might be in cracks. But if it's plastic or uh, rubber, you're not going to be able to heat it up. And therefore, preferably, you should not use it unless you know that you only use this food processor with vegetables, um, and other non hametz foods. For example, if you had um, a meat grinder that you only use for meat and chicken and vegetables, but you never put dough in it or any spices that may be hametz, then such a, such a uh, meat grinder just wash and you would be able to use it on uh, Pesach. However, if um, you use the meat grinder on um, uh, for hametz, then you should not um, clean it for Pesach because it's it has many parts and it's difficult to, to make sure that it's uh, free of hametz. Now, we move on to utensils, pots and pans and, uh, and uh, silverware and dishes. 
how do we clean them um, and cash them for Pesach? Ideally, ideally, you should have a separate set of all pots and pans and dishes for Pesach. This will make your life much easier and uh, faster to prepare for Pesach. You just put away the old dishes, take out the new ones. However, if a person cannot um, do it, then he needs to clean and kosher the dishes every year for Pesach. Now, separate uh, halakha, uh, before we use metal or glass or porcelain, fine china dishes, we have to immerse them in mikveh. If you have not done it so, you can still do it even after uh, use, as long as the utensil is clean. Now, if your utensils are new, you don't need to kosher them. You can just rinse them and, and or wash them and use them for Passover. If your utensils are um, used, then you need to kosher them. The, the general rule for koshering is if a utensil is used only for cold food, all it needs is washing. But if the utensil um, is used for hot, then you need to do Hagala, you need to uh, boil water in it or dip the utensil into a pot of boiling water. Um, this rule is also applied to other appliances. An appliance that is only used for cold water, for example, a refrigerator uh, that's used only for cold food, does not need kashering. Refrigerator, you just uh, wash with soapy sponge. And that's it. We don't need to uh, cover refrigerator shelves with anything. As long as soapy water and sponge touched every surface, the refrigerator becomes kosher. Now, um, it's good to have a large pot in which you will boil water and you will dip your utensils. And that pot does not have to be a Pesach pot. That means as long as this pot is clean and it was not used in the last 24 hours, even though it is meaty, even though it's dairy, even though it's hummus dick, as long as it's clean and it was not used in the last 24 hours, you can use that pot to warm up, uh, to, to boil water, and then you can dip your utensils that you want to make them kosher for Pesach. So, all your silverware, spoons, forks, knives, after cleaning them very well, making sure that in crevices between the, uh, the, the teeth of the fork, you clean all the, the uh, dirt, the knife between the blade and the handle, often there's dirt, you clean that dirt. After that, you can put all your utensils into the boiling water, wait until the water boils, and then take them out and put them in cold water. Um, the same process is for metal, pots, pans, bowls, as long as they are made from stainless steel or aluminum or cast iron, you clean them very well. There should be no stains on them. And then you immerse them into that big pot. And if you have a pot that is not going to fit into another big pot, then you would have to uh, fill it up with uh, water and boil the water. And then make sure that some water spills over the edge to kosher the edge. And remember that for Every utensil that you kosher, you have to kosher the lid or the cover as well. And if the lid doesn't fit in completely, you can put it in um, partially and then rotate it so that the entire lid um, is dipped in, um, uh, has a chance to be in boiling water. Okay, now that, that's the important difference between immersing utensils in the mikveh where the entire utensil needs to be in the mikveh at the same time and immersing the utensil in boiling water in order to kosher it where it does not have to be immersed at the same time. You can do, let's say you have a long ladle, you can immerse 
that ladle in boiling water halfway and then turn it upside down and immerse it uh, the other way. Now, we continue with uh, glass. Glass cups and plates, according to Sephardi custom, do not absorb and therefore they never become non-kosher. Any uh, hummets food that they came into contact with is only on the surface, does not get absorbed inside. And therefore, all glass utensils can be washed well with soap. And as long as they're completely clean, no stains on them, they can be used for Passover. And what's included in glass, uh, any kind of glass, whether it's clear or colored, including uh, Pyrex and Corel, it's enough to um, wash them with soap. Next comes uh, porcelain. Normally, porcelain, we do not kosher. Ceramic, clay, earthenware, we do not kosher. However, if a person cannot afford or he's in a difficult situation, doesn't have opportunity to buy uh, separate plates for Passover, if these plates were not used for one year, he can dip them in boiling water three times in separate boiling water in three separate pots, and then he can use them. Uh, similarly, plastic under normal circumstances, we do not kosher, but if a person does not have opportunity to buy uh, an, uh, other plastic utensils, he uh, can dip them in boiling water three times and use them. Again, this is not to be used um, in normal circumstance, only if a person doesn't have any other choice. Um, next come utensils that have non-stick surface. They're metal, but they have Teflon or some other kind of non-stick surface, whether it's ceramic or um, any other name. Generally, we do not kosher them as well for Pesach. If a person has no choice, then we would follow the same procedures for plates. He would, uh, after uh, cleaning them very well, uh, boil them in three different waters. And in such a case, it's also a good idea to add some detergent to your boiling water. Okay. Now we go to uh, page six. And here we have a, a, a list of all utensils that it's enough to just wash them with soap. Um, and as I said, that includes a, a, anything that was used with only cold food. Refrigerator, freezer, it's enough just to wash them with soap, don't need to cover. Cabinets, again, you just wash them with soap, don't need to cover, and you can put your Pesach uh, plates and uh, packages directly into your shelves and the cabinets without covering them. Uh, garbage can also should be washed with soap. Um, we mentioned glass, even though they're used with hot, can be washed with soap and that is enough. Uh, your kiddush cups, um, enough to wash it with soap. Chairs, tables, um, dentures, salt shakers, all these things can be uh, washed just with sponge and soap and be used on, on, on Pesach. Similarly, a uh, high chair for the, your baby and the, the table for the high chair, it's enough to wash it with soapy water and sponge and it's enough. You don't need to pour boiling water. You don't need to um, cover it. Again, the idea is since we never put boiling hot food for your baby, so it's not a problem. Just wash it with soap. Um, certain appliances we do not kosher for Pesach, like 
uh, toasters, toaster ovens, and, uh, and mixers and uh, food processes I mentioned in, uh, before that we do not kosher them because uh, it would be not practical to kosher them. Okay, um, now medicines. All medicines that are in a pill form or tablet form that you swallow, that you do not chew, that don't have a taste, are permitted. Again, any medicine that is in a pill form or tablet form that you swallow are permitted on Pesach. And again, this includes medicine, not vitamins. Vitamins have to be kosher for Pesach. Vitamins, we have to make sure they don't have any um, uh, hummus ingredients, even though you're swallowing them because vitamins are considered food supplements and therefore they are treated like food. Whereas medicines that, that are taken uh, for, the, for a, an existing disease are not considered food and therefore you can you can um, take them uh, without checking for comments. Um, now, there is a list of medicines. Um, I'm going to tell you which page it's on. It's in the packet. On page towards the end of the packet, on page 18, on page 18, you have a list of medicines that do not, that have taste, that do not require um, Pesach supervision. There are many others, but but similar, uh, but simple medications that are popular are listed here. Uh, for example, I'm going to read popular popular ones: Benadryl, liquid, all flavors; dye-free liquid, all flavors; children's chewable Benadryl, all permitted. Um, Metamucil powder is permitted. Miralax powder is permitted. Peptobismol liquid is permitted, original. Milk of magnesia, magnesia, uh, Philips original per is permitted. Senecord, okay, uh, uh, Tom's are permitted as well. Motrin, infant and children's liquid is permitted. Tylenol, children's, all flavors permitted. Infants, Tylenol, liquid, all flavors permitted. Okay, thank you for asking that question. Uh, again, it's on page 18 of your packet. Now we continue. Um, similarly, if you have uh, a tray for serving food, you can just wash it with uh, soap and you can use the same serving tray. The same idea goes for corkscrew can opener. As long as they're washed with um, uh, soap and sponge and they're clean, you can use them for Pesach. Okay, now we continue with going over the packet. Uh, one more, uh, more, more item that it's enough to wash with soap is the washing cup for which you wash netilat yadaim in the morning or for bread. It's enough just to wash it with soap. Um, our custom is to replace the toothbrush every Passover. If a person cannot replace the toothbrush, 
it's enough to just wash it well with soap. Next, page seven on, in your packet, sale of hummus. As we mentioned, every person should sell their hummus. Even if your custom is not to sell hummus, but to get rid of all hummus, it's still a good idea to fill out the sale of hummus form so that if you forgot or didn't notice hummus in your home, it will be sold and um, uh, it will not become forbidden after Pesach. Some people prefer not to sell hummets. That is uh, the best way, but rather to get rid of all hummets. But for families where uh, you have a lot of hummets and uh, or you cannot afford it, or you have children who may need special food right after Pesach, you can, it is permitted to sell hummets. But you have to do it with a valid Orthodox um, uh, rabbi or an organization, you have to do it before Hametz becomes forbidden, which means you have to do it uh, by 11 a.m. on Friday before Pesach. This year, 2021, when Pesach starts on Shabbat, uh, Motzei Shabbat, Saturday night, you have to sign and deliver the paper to the rabbi for the sale of hummets by 11 a.m. on Friday morning. Now, uh, okay, now let's continue to page eight. This uh, page contains Okay, someone is asking about selling hummets. You can sell any hummets. Preferably, you should only sell hummets that you cannot afford to get rid of. Ideally, if you are in a position that you can consume, give away, or throw out all your hummets, you should do that. But if you cannot, you can sell, and you can sell any hummets whether it's a closed package, open package, used, new, you can sell all hummets in your possession. Okay, now page eight of your packet contains the guide for the times for the first days of Passover. And um, for example, on Thursday, March 25th, in the evening, we search uh, for Hametz after 7.30 p.m. approximately uh, in Queens, New York. On Friday, March 26th, you have to sell and burn Hametz uh, before 11.47 a.m. On Shabbat, March 27th, the latest time to eat hummus is 10.28, which means you have to finish your Shabbat prayers and you have to come home and start your meal and finish your hummus by 10.28, at which point you have to uh, get rid of remaining hummus, flush it down the toilet, collect all the crumbs, flush them, um, wash your hands, brush your teeth if necessary, and by 10.28, you have to be hummus free. And it also contains uh, candle lighting times for Friday evening, Saturday evening, and Sunday evening. So print out either the whole packet or at least this page because it will have times and uh, procedure for the, the holiday. Um, the rest of the page contains instructions how to perform bedikat hametz, when to do it, how to do the bitul hametz, nullification of hametz, and we do it three times, once by the night of Pidikat Hametz, once in the morning after burning Hametz. This year we do it three times, usually two times. And on Shabbat morning, after we got rid of all Hametz by 1028, after that time, we do the final uh, Bitul Hametz. Okay. Next, 
we continue with the seder, the Passover, Passover seder. We go to page nine of your packet. The seder is the same for both nights of Pesach, the same procedure you do the first night, the same the second night, except that this, this um, year, 2021, since the first night of Pesach is Motzei Shabbat, we will have to do uh, ki, uh, Havdalah in the Kiddush of the first night of Pesach. And the Kiddush uh, will, in addition to the regular Kiddush, will have the special blessing for the candle. So uh, you will need an additional candle. If you have a uh, two weeks, use a candle with two weeks. If you don't, use a candle with one week, or you can use two thin Hanukkah candles, the colorful ones that are not kosher for Hanukkah. You can use them for Havdalah uh, this year. And uh, you make a special blessing for the candles. And you say a blessing for Havdalah within Kiddush. The second night, you, you just do the regular Kiddush without Havdalah blessing. Now, uh, somebody is asking a question about what if you want to finish all your hamas before Shabbat? Yes, that is a good idea. In such a case, uh, for Friday night, you can use machine matzah that's kosher for Passover. doesn't have to be shmura. But for Shabbat day, we're not allowed to eat um, matzah, even though it's not shmura and even though it's machine. For, in, in such a case, you would either eat egg matzah or preferably you should fry a machine matzah before Shabbat with eggs, which means you would make a batter like for omelet, just eggs. Um, you can add salt and pepper, whatever you want, and then dip each matzah. It has to be a complete matzah, not broken. You dip it into the, the batter of eggs and fry it on both sides. And then you can use that matzah for Shabbat day, if you want, for the night as well. And you would say hamotzi on it as long as it's a whole matzah. And you can use it for all three meals of Shabbat, including Sudash Lishit. Now, Sudash Lishit has to be um, eaten before 4 p.m. on Shabbat. After 4 p.m., you cannot eat uh, matzah anymore. You would have to say uh, make sudash lishit with uh, other kinds of food like meat uh, um, and fruits, vegetables, and fish. Again, if you eat regular matzah for Friday night, you can say hamotzi on it. If you eat fried matzah with eggs, complete uh, uh, slice, you can say hamotzi on it. If you decide to eat egg matzah, there are different opinions. Some allow you to say hamotzi on it. Some you say you should uh, say mezonot on it. That's, therefore, it's, it's uh, not ideal to use egg matzah. But if a person has to, uh, he can eat egg matzah for the three meals of Shabbat. But again, he will enter a, a machloket, an argument. Some will tell you to say mezonot on it, unless you eat a huge amount. And some will say you can, uh, that you can say hamotzi on it. Again, ask your uh, personal rabbi. Now, let's continue with the seder. It's very important that uh, uh, we perform all the mitzvot of the seder. And there are seven mitzvot. Two of them are Torah mitzvot, midoraita. And that is to read um, the, the Haggadah, the story of Paso Passover, and to eat matzah. Now, again, someone is asking a question, why can't we eat uh, machine matzah on uh, Shabbat day? Then the rule is, any matzah that... Uh, that is a, a regular plain matzah that can be eaten on Pesach, cannot be eaten the day before Pesach in order that the taste of, of matzah should be new for us and that we should 
enjoy it. And therefore, some people stop eating matzah a whole month before Pesach. Some stop eating matzah two weeks before Pesach. Some stop eating matzah a week before Pesach. But everyone is required to stop eating matzah the day before Pesach. And therefore, Shabbat morning and Shabbat afternoon for Sudash Lishit, we're not allowed to eat regular matzah uh, because we have to save the new taste of, of matzah for the Pesach night. Therefore, you either use matzah that is uh, uh, fried with eggs, which changes its taste, and therefore it's permitted, or we eat egg matzah. Okay, again, if a person wants to use bread for the first two meals of Shabbat, Friday night and Shabbat morning, he can do it, but he has to be very careful to avoid crumbs and to get rid of it by 1028. Uh, yes, at of Shabbat, Friday night, one is allowed to eat whatever he wants, either bread, again, very carefully, or regular matzah um, that is not fried. Okay, now, the, the mitzvah of saying the Haggadah is, uh, is uh, very important. It's even more important than drinking four cups. Why? Because drinking four cups is rabbinic, whereas saying the story of Passover is from the Torah. That means both men and women must participate in Haggadah. It's not enough that the man reads the Haggadah, the head of the household, and everyone is talking or just uh, minding their own business or serving. Even women who run between uh, the, the table and the kitchen must read or listen to Haggadah in its entirety. And therefore, if they know that they're going to be away from the table and will miss part of the Haggadah, they should have their personal Haggadah and catch up and read it. Haggadah can be read in any language that you understand. Okay. Next is we have to eat matzah three separate times during the Pesach Seder. One for the mitzvah of matzah uh, at the beginning of this of the the seder then we eat a sandwich korech matzah with maror in the middle and then we eat afikomen at the end of the seder and we have five rabbinic mitzvot number one is eating bitter herbs maror number two is uh, eating the afikomen which is the extra piece of matzah we eat at the end is rabbinic. Why? Because we need to remind ourselves of the Korban Pesach, the Pesach offering that we unfortunately cannot bring now, which was eaten right before a person becomes satisfied. First, we would eat um, uh, Hagiga offerings, other food, and then right before we become satisfied, then we would eat Pesach offering with matzah. The third rabbinic mitzvah is saying Hallel. We say Hallel on uh, Pesach night twice, once in the synagogue and once by the seder. Both men and women have to say Hallel on Pesach night. The, the next mitzvah is drinking four cups of wine while leaning on your left. And the seventh uh, uh, mitzvah for the Pesach seder is showing uh, royalty, showing freedom. For that, we put out um, all our best dishes. We put on best clothing. We sit comfortably and we lean on the left side. And we dip in uh, salt water. One of the reasons is to show that we are royalty. Um, a person who is rich, he can afford not only to eat uh, plain food, but he can avoid, uh, he, he can afford dips to uh, help his appetite. This way he will be able to eat more. So one of the reasons that we dip 
in salt water and that, that we eat maror is of course because of the bitter herbs, because of the bitter tears and salty tears that the Jewish people shed. But another uh, reason is to show aristocrats uh, uh, that we are aristocrats, that we have plenty and we even in, in, increase our appetite by eating spicy food, uh, bitter uh, herbs, and dipping in uh, salty water and in, in uh, harosa. Okay, now let's go through each one of these mitzvot and speak about the, the, the halachic parameters for them. Number one, matzah. Every person must eat at least a kezayit of matzah for each one of the three times. And the leader should eat uh, two olive size uh, amounts. Now, what is a kezayit? Kezayit is either a weight of one, one ounce, which is 28 grams, one, one ounce. That is the strict opinion. Or it is the volume that a large olive, the largest olive that, is, uh, that, that we have, occupies. And um, there are three levels, therefore. Number one, the strictest is that each kezayit is one ounce, 28 grams, which means that every person by the seder would have to eat 28 grams of matzah, and the leader would eat double that. Um, and for that, it's a good idea to have a scale, to purchase a scale, like a postal scale or food scale, and measure to have an idea how, how heavy your matzah is. A more lenient measure for kezayit is 20 grams or, or two-thirds of an ounce, and the leader would eat double of that for the first time. And the, uh, so that is the second opinion. Again, either 28 grams for the strict opinion, for the average opinion, 20 grams. And the lenient opinion uh, says that you can eat a, uh, for, again, this lenient opinion is used for elders, for sick people, and for children. Uh, that is 14 grams. Again, for a person who is healthy, adult, he should use either 20 grams or 28 grams. Um, and as an example, a machine matzah is 28 grams. So if you eat, uh, if you want to eat 20 grams, that would be two thirds of the machine matzah. And hand matzah depends on the thickness and the size of the, of the circle. And therefore it's again Im important to practice and to, to purchase a, a scale and to measure uh, the matzah beforehand, either for each individual and put it in bags. This will uh, guarantee that everyone is eating enough and that uh, and it will save you time during the seder. Okay, so again, the strictest opinion for eating matzah by the seder is 28 grams, a whole ounce, um, three times. The medium opinion, uh, 20 grams, two thirds of the machine matzah, three times and uh, and the most lenient opinion is 14 grams but that should be used for sick people or elderly or children um, okay so again the difference between all participants and the leader is that the leader should eat a double portion for the first time that he eats and for afikomen. And we try to finish the matzah, um, the amount of matzah that, that, that um, is the minimum requirement within seven minutes and preferably without any other food or drink, if you can. If not, you can drink some water to help you 
uh, swallow it. Um, and we eat matzah while leaning on the left side. If a person ate matzah without leaning, he would have to eat matzah again. If there's not enough matzah in the, the matzah that a person made a blessing on in, to divide it among everyone, it's okay to use other matzot uh, from the box. And the same is for afikomen. If the afikomen is not enough for everyone, you can give a, a small piece of afikomen to each person and give them additionally a large piece from regular matzah and they have to eat both of them together. Those of us that have a custom to save a piece of matzah for the entire year, um, you have to make sure that it's a separate piece of matzah because you have to eat uh, a whole ounce or at least 20 grams of matzah for afikomen. It's not enough just to receive a small af uh, afikomen and break it in half, put half of it in your pocket and eat a little half. Um, you have to eat a whole ounce or at least 20 grams of afikomen at the end of your meal before Birkat Amazon. Okay, now we continue to the second mitzvah from the Torah during the Pesach Seder, and that is telling the story of Pesach. Ideally, a person should say the entire Haggadah. If for some reason he cannot, at least he has to mention three ideas. The idea of Pesach, why do we eat Pesach offering? And that is because God saved us and he jumped over the houses of the Jewish people and he only killed the Egyptians. And now I'm on page 11 of your uh, uh, booklet. If you, in emergency case, read just this page for Pesach, again, in emergency case, you will fulfill the mitzvah because you will mention the three main points. Pesach, matzah, and you explain what does matzah represent, what does it symbolize, that the Jewish people left Egypt quickly and they, their dough did not have time to rise, and Maror, why do we eat maror? To remember the, the bitter life and servitude that the Egyptians um, uh, tormented us with in Egypt. Good. Now we go to page 12 and uh, we will discuss the four cups of wine. Every cup of wine must contain at least three ounces of wine or grape juice. Preferably it should be wine. If a person cannot drink wine, it can be grape juice or diluted wine with grape juice, or it can be low alcohol wine. Preferably it should be red. Whether it's wine or grape juice, it should be red. red. If a person doesn't have red wine or grape juice, he can use a different color. Um, Preferably, it should be wine that was not pasteurized, not cooked, not mevushal. But if a person will have non-Jews at the seder or at home or Jewish people that don't keep Shabbat, he cannot have non-mevushal wine. So he, he is allowed to use mevushal, uh, pasteurized wine. A person is required to drink majority of every cup which means the minimum that your cup must contain is three ounces. That means a person should drink about two ounces from each cup. If, however, your cup is large and it has five ounces, you have to drink majority of that cup. So it means you have to drink three. If you use a cup that is seven ounces, then you have to drink majority of that cup and that is um, uh, four ounces. So it's for your benefit uh, to use the cup that is as close to three ounces as possible, just to drop more than three ounces so that you don't have to drink so much. 
And when we drink uh, the wine, we should drink preferably without interruption. One gulp, two, three gulps without interruption. Majority of the cup, about, about two ounces minimum. And we should lean to the left. If, um, if a person does, did not lean when he drank the cups, he has to drink cups again. And leaning to the left means you are actually leaning to the left and you're leaning on something, either on the table or the, the, the arm of the chair or on the next person who is sitting next to you. But leaning in air doesn't count. So if your um, chair doesn't have a, a, a handle, and there's no one sitting next to you that you can lean on, then turn sideways and lean on the back of your chair. It's not enough to just lean backwards. It's not enough to lean in air. You have to lean on something. So uh, you can uh, lean on the back of your chair while sitting sideways. Okay, now we go to page 13 and we're discussing uh, how much lettuce to eat. The preferred um, herb to eat for maror, for bitter herbs, is romaine lettuce. And uh, we have to eat one ounce twice. One for maror, when we make the, the, the blessing on it, al achilat maror. And the second time with korech, when we take matzah, put maror in it, dip it in haroset. And again, it's preferable to measure it with a foot scale. If you don't have a foot scale, then if you're using leaves, it's um, the, the leaves of maror should cover almost the entire page um, of eight by 11. Okay, and an important idea about eating eating romaine lettuce is that you have to check it for bugs. Either you buy romaine, romaine lettuce that is bug free from um, um, greenhouse with proper supervision, or it it was cleaned at the factory again with proper supervision. Or you have to learn how to check vegetables um, properly yourself. And and for that. Um, you can you can find a description on Emmet website as well um, that will teach you how to clean romaine lettuce. We will post the the link. Otherwise, you can search yourself online either from Star K O U or or um, another. Um, or CRC or another hashgacha um, that is reliable. Okay, now we go to page 14. Sephardi Jews are allowed to eat rice on Pesach. However, that rice must be unenriched because enriched rice contains vitamins which were delivered onto the rice, possibly using hummus. And therefore, you have to make sure that the rice does not contain any, any, any vitamins in the ingredients or it states on the package unenriched. And the uh, <clears throat> uh, basmati rice, natural, uh, jasmine rice is okay. Brown rice is okay. Uh, white rice, the popular rice, kokuho rice, whether it is red or yellow, is permitted. Um, white rice must be checked once to make sure it's pure rice, no other grains. And brown rice must be checked three times to make sure that it does not contain any other grains. If you didn't check rice before Pesach, uh, which you should preferably do, you can check it on Passover, on Yom Tov or Cholam Oed, but then you can only check enough what you need uh, for that day. Okay. Um, on page 15 of the booklet, you have foods 
food items that do not need special uh, Passover certification. However, any food that does not um, have Passover certification, you have to purchase it before Passover. And on page 15, check it, it has an extensive list. Okay, now on page 16, we have non-food items that do not require Passover certification. Also very useful list, which will make your life easier. On page 17, we have a link uh, to, to a product list from JSOR. Whoever wants can, can access it there. And again, page 18 has a list of common medicines um, that do not require Passover certification. Okay, now on page 19, we have um, an instruction for the seder plate. Besides the matzah and maror that we mentioned, seder plate also needs karpas, which is a vegetable like a radish or um, carrot or <clears throat> celery, which we dip in salt water. Salt water should also be prepared before Shabbat, before Yom Tov, as well as um, uh, hard boiled egg, and as, as well as uh, bone with some meat on it that was roasted. Ideally, it will come from a lamb, but if you don't have lamb, you can use chicken bone with some meat on it that you roasted. Haroset, which is mixture of uh, nuts and some sweet um, dried fruit or fresh fruit, different recipes, whatever you use. Some use dates, some use um, um, raisins or apples or combination of any other thing. Use your traditional recipe. And um, of course, we have, we have uh, maror and one more chazeret, which can also be um, lettuce or another vegetable. Okay, there are two different ways to arrange the seder plate, either follow your sidur or, or follow your haggadah for it. At this point, um, I will take questions. Page 20 and 21 have a detailed guide for the Pesach Seder. If you need to, um, if you need to ask me a question, please um, unmute yourself. Let me change the... Okay, very good. Now, if you need, you can unmute yourself and ask, or you can ask in the chat. We have finished the official uh, presentation. On page 22 of the booklet, you have some examples of uh, um, alcohol beverages that have Passover certification. Every, everything else needs to be asked separately. Okay, and on page 23, we have a list of um, supermarkets that are not Jewish owned. Um, and you can buy their comets after Passover. For example, Costco, Rite Aid, uh, 7-Eleven, ShopRite, Walmart, and uh, Walgreens, and some, and, and some other uh, supermarkets that, are, that you, can, you can shop right after Passover. Okay, again, if you have questions, you're welcome to ask. Uh, let me open the chat. Okay. You can use baby bottles just by washing them with soap. Whether they are uh, glass or plastic, you can use the same nipples 
just wash them with soap. Children toys should be uh, washed. Uh, children toys that you are not going to use on uh, uh, Passover, just put them away and, and sell them together with your comments. But any toys that uh, you're planning to use, wash them with soap. Uh, same with uh, game boards, if you want to use them. Either if you know you kept them clean, that's fine. If you know that your children made them, uh, made them uh, dirty, you, you have to wash them with soap. Uh, what about his shish kebab sticks? So first of all, let's speak about the, the mangal, the, the part upon which you make shish kebab. Uh, you have to, of course, um, remove all the old coal and you have to clean out if there are any, uh, if there is any food that was placed on it. Um, that, that, that dropped in it and uh, replaced with fresh coat. <laughs> Okay. Now, um, looks like we have a little bit of a situation here. One second, Rabbi. Okay. One second. Yes. Now let me look at the other. Let me look at the chat again. I'm gonna do mute all, but without a live part, the live participants. Sorry, everybody. Okay, I think we're now, good. After you remove the coal and you cleaned your mangal or your grill, you fill it with fresh coal, you start it. Once it gets hot, you can use it for your Pesach um, meat. Now, what about the sticks? The sticks, either you have to put them in a self-cleaning oven or before Passover, all these things you have to do before Passover, you uh, put them inside the, the hot coals. You have to cover them with hot coals and after it is um, after it is um, uh, it is there and it's burnt well, you clean them and it's it's good. Um, okay, now let me continue looking at the chat. I'm going to apologize. There's two people that are here with iPhones. I'm going to have to remove the one that's iPhone, but I'm not sure who is the person that is writing the insensitive things that's being posted right now. I'm removing both I, um, iPhones. Oh, it seems like they removed themselves. Okay. Okay. Okay, again, uh, whoever has questions, please uh, ask. Sorry, everybody. It seems like this is, you know, we're doing some holy things. And of course, there's always somebody that's going. To what about cleaning books on for Passover? And um, any book that you are not bringing to the table doesn't need to be cleaned. And therefore, it's preferable for on Passover not to bring um, sidurim, uh, prayer books, benches to the table, to have separate uh, Birkat Amazon just for Passover. Um, you, you cannot use boiling water to kosher your grill or your, your grate or uh, sticks. For, for shish kebab, it has to be with fire. So again, either um, self-cleaning oven or um, covered with coals. If your if your grill is um, a gas grill, then you also have to clean it very well on the inside, 
and you have to again put the grate uh, in self cleaning oven or get a new new grate. Okay, any other questions, please? Um, yes, play dough should be sold together with the rest of the hummets because regular American play dough is hummets. Um, yes, when when you clean children's games, it's enough just to go through to make sure there are there is no uh, uh, cookie stuck anywhere, cherry stuck anywhere, but still you don't want to uh, that your children should put their toys in their mouth if they have any hummus. That's why it's important to wash the toys. Um, if your counters are for mica, wash them well with soap sponge and it's enough um just don't put food directly on them always use plates or uh, uh, cutting boards wooden desk the same idea as a table just wash it with soap and don't put food directly on it um, either use plates or have a table cover so on the on the on on thursday on Fr on shabbat night after Shabbat leaves, we make Kiddush, right? Before making Kiddush, you light Yom Tov candles, and then you light an additional candle for Havdalah. That candle you bring to the table, and by Kiddush, you make the regular Kiddush, then you say the blessing for candles, then you make a blessing for Havdalah, and then you say Shehiyano, and you leave that candle that it should burn out by itself, because on Yom Tov, we cannot put out the fire. Um, you can use regular Shabbat candles for lighting Friday night, lighting Motzei Shabbat, and lighting Sunday night. Regular Shabbat candles. Just for Havdalah, if you have a, a candle with two wicks, or you can take two candles and put them together, that would be the ideal. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. The, the vacuum bag, the reason for the vacuum bag is because um, often it, it, it uh, pulls in uh, real hummets, like cookies and cheerios and candy and because it's all in one place it is possible that it uh, it will combine and form a kezaid an ounce of hametz so just for as a precaution we we throw out the the garbage bag um and it's true that any any place that i will not have access before uh, during passover uh, i don't have to check I can just sell it together together with my hummus. So under the oven or behind the oven, under the refrigerator, behind the refrigerator, um, I don't have to check because I will nullify my hummus. I will sell my hummus and I'm not going to access the hummus that's in those places. Uh, dishwasher, of course, you check, but you can cash the dishwasher by running an empty cycle. You, we cannot put out half dollar candle the Havdalah candle, you just put your fingers there and you leave it to burn out by itself. That's why don't use the big Havdalah candle that you use every day because then you're not going to be able to put it out. Just take a regular uh, tea light candle or take two little Hav uh, Hanukkah candles, the little ones, you put them together and then you leave them that they should burn out by themselves. Yes, we light two candles for each night of Yom Tov. Uh, on the plata, if you clean your plata very well, you, there are no stains, it's absolutely clean. You can, you can um, uh, pour boiling water on it, but you still cannot put any food directly on it. Pots, pans you can put, but you cannot put matzah or any food directly on a platter or on a blech. It has to be covered with aluminum foil first. 
um, utensils that are used for cold food, even if you wash them together with hamets previously, it's enough just to wash them. For example, coarse screw or, or, or can opener, as long as it's clean, even though you use you, you uh, washed it with hamets, it's enough just to wash it with soap, it's, enough, it's, it's good. Uh, the, the Sephardic custom is that Shabbat and Yom Tov candles are only lit uh, by one person, one set per household with a blessing. Other people can light, but they cannot make a blessing if it's in the same room. If it's in a different room uh, and a different family, for example, can light in their bedroom, then they can make a blessing. Otherwise, only one set of candles with a blessing for Sephardim on Shabbat and Yom Tov. It's okay if the dishwasher is plastic inside, it can still be kosher with just running an empty um, cycle. Okay, e excellent. Thank you very much for, for listening. Um, we will have other classes relating to Pes Pesach on Monday night. Bezat Hashem, next Wednesday night, we will have this class in Russian. So invite all your um, Russian-speaking relatives. Um, any detergent can be used on Passover. Um, it's included in the list for non-food items in your booklet. Any soap, any shampoo, any dishwashing liquid, even without hechsher, can be used because it is inedible. Okay, thank you. Um, have a good night. Shabbat Shalom. Hag Sameach.